Hello and welcome. Welcome back. Uh, last crazy. time, uh, you guys uh, in, invaded the sanctity of uh, the Silent City, uh, the city of Riftkin, mm -hmm. and uh, passed through largely unscathed. It's because we sang the anthem. You did sing the you did sing the national anthem of uh, Gotalan with uh, with your new friend. Mm -hmm. um, very well done. And uh, last we left, you guys had uh, departed the tomb of Saint Hezekiah, set down for a peaceful night where nothing happened. I think we're finishing up watch. And your right? rest, I believe, last time. And if not, I'll say it now. You the Rest of your night will pass uneventfully unless there's any uh, conversations any of you would like to have. Good morning. I will have had coffee made for everybody because we got to get moving. Nice. I respect it. I'm going to roll my spark roll. Okay. Please do. 57. Whoa. Not bad. Well, signature uh, two thirds. Oh, it's not even two thirds this time. It's five sixths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Signature six are all here, but what are you doing? I'll, I'll be sitting around the fire waiting for everybody to get up. Okay. Morning, all. Good morning. morning. We head back to the train. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Did the tax collector show up? St. Winona, the tax collector, for sure, showed up last night. Whoa. Um, he gave both T and I some information. Um, one pertains to the person that murdered my father. And he gave me the location. He is in Fletcher's Roost, inside the Ember Lounge, as we speak. I would like to go immediately to Fletcher's Roost to get him. Like, to kill him? To get answers. This is the only the murderer of my father. This is not necessarily the leader uh, that uh, gave the order. I see. Only. Do, do you know who, or what, what they look like, or what their name is? He did... Give me what they look like. I will be right. able to spot him in the Ember Lounge. Yes. yes the right. ta the tax collector has essentially told me that my vengeance is um, allowed. So it's justified. It's a justified vengeance um, due to what he has done to my family, my friends, and me. So you are going to kill him? After we get some answers, I'll make that decision. He told me that there is a a vault, essentially, of riches from Lao Tzu Shirai, and he would give us the location if we can capture Bill Winchester. Capture a man that can't die, though. Saint Winona still has the His coin yeah. of Bill Winchester. But did, did they it's give teams. it to you so you can use it? Um, no. No. So how are we going to catch him? Uh, I suppose he can be caught M by regular means. Otherwise, why would the saint put this deal on the table? Yeah, but it puts a bigger target on our backs when the man that we're trying to capture can't die, but we we can. And is in power. I can't imagine we can just handcuff him and walk him out of the building. He, he did mention that people who have lost their souls, there is always a way to take them down. I think Bill Winchester's is putting him back in the coin. He didn't give me further information on that. But the man I'm looking for that killed my father, there are proper ways to kill him. So it seems like he is a uh, stronger than normal person. I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. Are you talking about Bill still, or the person... The person that killed my father. Is also... He's a lost soul. He has lost his soul. From a coin? It he... sounds like it. What uh, St. Winona did tell me is that Maria Winchester is safe, and her soul is safe. Um, but he could not give me her location. Fair enough. And that is uh, about the gist of the information that I have retrieved from him. I asked about this scarf that I wear. I found out that it was made by the people of No, that we just went into the city. Just invaded. Yeah. <laughs> and that we were escorted out of. So do you think you're from here? 
Or just the person who made the scarf is Just the here. person, yes, is crafted here. How did you come by it? On one of my adventures. You just found it? Mm -hmm. Like on the ground? No. Attached to a body? <laughs> <laughs> that you killed? <laughs> That's a story for another time. We've I mean, got, we got plenty of time. time. That's, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've all well, opened up to you. When the time is right, I'm sure T will share. I, I will. Do you have a way of uh, getting a hold of St. Winona if we capture Bill? Or is it just a, uh, nah, they'll don't know. I think what we have to do is we have to find where Bill's soul is being kept. The first clue might be his body. Because he exited a coin, and to our knowledge... Yeah, but if St. Winona just wants Bill, we can just try to get Bill. I think St. Winona wants Bill's soul. And since everybody keeps talking about he's a soulless man, um, I don't think capturing him himself is going to get Winona out here. But if you guys are, if you guys are all in aligned with me, I would love to go back to Fletcher's Roost first before we go back to your uh, ranch. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. I mean, you kind of. Gave me a little bit of peace of mind saying Maria's safe or at least her soul's fine and unharmed and it's good enough for another day or two. So uh, you've done me a service in assisting me when I had nowhere to go. The least I can do is, if need be, help you put down a man that killed your father. You guys zip on down back to your train, which has uh, been waiting for you. And I will release the rail wraith back into the train because we did take him. Yeah. T right. What's up, guys? Nice. All aboard! I heard that once. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're Where'd gonna go? we're gonna go to Raven or not Raven songs. Uh, we're going to Fletcher's Roost. Okay. At the fastest pace you can move. <laughs> yeah. There's no speed limits to buckle die. Buckle your nuts, bro. Okay. Everybody on? Did you tell me to buckle my nuts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he right. said fast. <laughs> Rail Wraith will kick it into overdrive for you and begin hurtling you all back towards Fletcher's roost. You guys will arrive in the early evening. Say 7, 7.30 p.m. The Rail Wraith is... Chugging right along as, as Fletcher's Roost comes back into view. And he's like, hey, everybody, we're almost there. And we're there. As you guys are very swiftly able to re-rack the train at Fletcher's Roost. To Ember Lounge to awaits, Ember, if yeah. that's where you're going. And I'm, I am going to huff it over to Ember Lounge. Oh. On our way there, Faraday, is this something that you want to walk into by yourself, or do you want everyone with you? I think it would be beneficial to have everybody with me, um, but we should have a plan. I think you guys, Callum, Adelaide, and T, <coughs> should guard the door, the exits. Mm. <laughs> Buck. Hey. If you'll come with me, oh, if he's at the bar or at a seat eating, I would yeah. like you to sit on the other side of him. Sure, and, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna get buddy buddy with him until he until he gets up. Um, the Ember Lounge is a. It's weird to call it a speakeasy because our main our main hub here is the speakeasy, but it's a more traditional kind of low key bar from the outside. It's a brick wall, metal door. Um, but there's no bouncer or anything. It's just a very unassuming looking building. But Faraday, you're sort of, you almost know where to go. Despite never having been here, you're walking with purpose. You know exactly where you're headed. And the name Vorok is kind of just lingering on the tip of your brain. As discussed, you would know where to find them in the Ember Lounge. So you're just sort of not propelled, not driven, but directed. 
you know where to go if it is your wish to go there. Well, that is definitely his wish right now. Uh, the door to the Ember Lounge is uh, very softly lit with like a, a very dull red lamp kind of outside. It's a little little lantern with just a red uh, hood cover over it. So it doesn't draw a lot of attention, but it sure it sure pulls you pulls you in. Fair days, you get closer and closer. Before we enter, I'll say to Adelaide, Callum, and T, grab a seat near the door. And um, I'll still I'll have Bud kind of out, but I don't think he's gonna he's not gonna come really near him. He's gonna hang out with you guys, but okay. he is going to put his hand under like my shirt. Okay. It's gonna be under my like little, little like, like cowl. Cowl. Yeah. And I will use him to communicate with you guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> if he takes two taps on the table, mm -hmm. that means he is he is leaving, and we need to follow and so you guys can get up um three taps means he's trying to exit the lounge completely and one tap means all is good if you guys seem to think things are getting suspicious and a gunshot means it's all going south yeah <laughs> hurry <laughs> help help oh no help help please help so help, help. i'll reiterate one tap all is good two taps guard the door or no two taps come to me three taps Hold Dude. on, hold on. Was that one tap or one tap twice? <laughs> one tap is he guard goes, the door. Come, come no, one tap, one tap is all good. One is all good. good. Two, Two is to come to me. Come inside. <laughs> come okay. to me. Come to me. Three is he is trying to leave out the exit. Buck, if you want to follow me in yeah. at the same time, yeah. and you guys can follow shortly after. Metal door swings wide, revealing a very, like, plush red velvet carpet but it's kind of dingy um very darkly lit a couple like booth seats kind of in the in the little entry space a lot of smoke is kind of pooling in and around there seems like a couple folks may be indulging um and there's a frankly quite deep building that you're walking into with stairs that lead down and it's kind of like um like a recessed seating area in the middle uh, with a thin line of like coal rocks gently simmering and that's the only light in the room and there are a few dozen people kind of spread out all kind of chatting with one another and one guy is outlined for Faraday in a thin sort of red haze as though to say this is the next Here's step of his Is he quest. at the booth? Is he at the bar? He is seated in one of those recessed areas, um, currently chatting with two individuals, one male, one female. Um, the male is on the older side, pushing probably late 60s, and the, the, the lady is probably in her 30s, both of them exceptionally well-dressed, both of them uh, native Carcassoans. The man that is sort of glowing to you uh, is something known as a Riftborn. So, looks human, for all intents and purposes, is human, but they're some at some aspect of their birth, they were marked by the cosmic Rift energy, and as such, uh, his skin specifically is quite marred to look um, very earthen. He's got like a very, very rocky exterior on his hands. It's not all the way across. It's kind of like the the little girl that Sir Davos learns how to read from. Okay. Where there's just patches of skin where instead of dragon scales, it's like earth, literal rocks and stone making up his body. Now I know what he means by if you stab in the right spot because mm -hmm. he's clearly yes. resistant Yes. Um, so for what it's worth, he will be resilient against uh, earth damage as well as the things that earth would resist. They do not share those vulnerabilities, though. So they are just tougher than the average person. But they're also exceptionally rare and typically ostracized. You won't usually see these guys with high society. But in the Ember Lounge, all are equal. 
Who's the older gentleman? The older gentleman does not ring any bells for the two of you. Okay. Have the three of you chosen to enter? No, I'm not entering. Okay. We have not received the tap yeah. signal. Okay. I didn't know if you guys were going to enter and just kind of chill by the door nah, or nah. if you're going to wait outside. Outside, bro. Okay. Then, yeah. None of these individuals look anything like anybody that Buck would ever hang out with because it is extremely high society and people that are extremely high in society. <laughs> Like the oh, weed high? I'm, I'm joking. I'm it's joking. it's <laughs> kind of it's basically <laughs> like a big hookah bar mm-hmm. that people come into to have like very quiet conversations because the only people overhearing you are blitzed out of their gourds. Mm-hmm. Now, are they sitting next to him or are they chatting with him standing up? They are all seated. They all seated, but the two of them are kind of like kitty corner. So they're he is on the other side oh, of okay. the kind of coal. Line. Does he have any chairs open next to him? Um, so it's a big like bench seat. So mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's plenty. So it looks like we can't we can't Oreo him right now. But not currently, no. But uh, and I'll I'll look over to Buck and I was like, let's go sit to the to the right of him. Following your lead. And I'll walk over and I'll as I'm walking it, uh, walking over, I'll tap on Bud's hand with one tap. Okay. Which to you guys will signal all's good. Everything's good in there. And I'll I'll have a seat next to him okay. and I will order a drink. A, a drink will be brought to Faraday, placed in your hand. No money is requested in any part of this. Ember Lounge is a very bizarre space so far for you. So you walk in, it's a tiny go, can I get it? And they go, and there's just this very lithe individual disappears into a back room for like 30 seconds and comes back with a beverage. Is this beverage alcoholic or is it it's like more than that? It smells extremely alcoholic. Okay, so I'm going to sip it. Okay. It's... It, it, yeah, it's potent. And I'm going to listen in to Vorak's conversation. Okay. To the best of my ability. Give me an awareness test. So 16 total. 16 total. As you are listening in on uh, this conversation, you'll hear the woman is doing most of the talking with Vorak sort of nodding and the older man just sort of sitting there as though he's exceptionally important and almost above speaking. You will overhear bits and pieces of the conversation. You'll get most of it. Vorak is doing a whole lot of sort of grunting, nodding, affirming. And you're sort of just burning with this desire to have something happen. But you manage to keep it together long enough. You catch that you are dealing with a Margravine Fiora de Vries. Isn't that like a queen or like a higher up? Very low down. Is it low down? A, mar- <laughs> a Margrave or a Margravine would be the furthest outreach of a kingdom. The That's lowest ranking nobles okay. on the outside. Yeah. Um, above them would be a duke or a duchess, then a baron, then a count, then your king. So, Fiora de Vries, Margravine, um, is currently seems to be negotiating the use of Vorox men for a potential you know what we're going to do because they're they're not talking plain so I'll say you're overhearing things give me an intuition test to piece together what they say versus what they mean Callum can assist Callum you Callum to the rescue 4 and 16 nice. 16 on there Okay, so yep, you rolled 16. a natural 16. Yeah, natural 16. So this makes it a nat 20, So a nat 20. <laughs> so Faraday, in this moment, I'll say through some means or another, your senses are just on full full peak. You've had just enough alcohol to take the edge off, and you're like, time to listen. I'll give you the plain speak of it. I'll save you what I was going to do to you, which is like, ah, oh, yes, yeah, some of the pawns are ready to move on the board. Fiora de Vries is commissioning Vorak and his men, known as the Broken Sunset to perhaps uh, move in on someone else's turf. And that someone's name is Merritt McDonough. Name that doesn't really mean a whole lot of anything to you at the moment. And Vorak seems to be amenable to this and says something to the effect of it would have been how much cheese is involved, but it's really how much am I getting paid? How much money is on the line for Vorak? 
Um, he states his minimum price as seventy thousand. Gold. Green coins. <laughs> oh, <it's>, oh. <laughs> Take every single person <laughs> so in that town turn every, to a coin. Every soul coin that exists. Yeah. So his minimum price is seventy thousand. The older man will whisper something, which you will catch to be. It's a bit steep, but we can afford it, and he's the best there is. Fiora will sigh deeply and agree, scribble something on a scrap of paper, pass it to Vorak, and then rise to leave. She will give a slight bow to Vorak. She will give a deeper bow to the gentleman. Duke Adolphus. Excuse me. And then Fiora will leave. The three of you outside, after about a minute, a very finely dressed noblewoman will exit, look at both of you hurriedly, snap her fingers twice, and a few guards will kind of move in from around the, the alleyway, surround her, and they will leave. Vorak and this Duke Adolphus continue their conversation. 70,000 is a high price. I certainly hope we're getting what we're due. To which Vorak will grunt. Broken sunset. Happy to work for coin. Not happy to work for rich man afraid to get his hands dirty. Well, I never... Well, you never deal with Vorok before. Vorok don't care what you think. Vorok care how much you pay. <sighs> Any prices worth it? We are looking to rise up, and that is what we will do. So you will get your money. <laughs> I, I'm going to leave. I'm, I'm out of here, Vorok. You, you'll get half now, and half of the job is done. And Vorok will place a thick stone arm on the man and sit him back down. You will pay all now, and bonus when done. For you have tried to change Vorok's deal. Vorok told you before we talk. No deal making. Price product. Fine. Unhand me, filthy man. The Duke will very quickly recuse himself from the room. As uh, Vorak will sit back and wave for another drink to be brought over. He'll kind of turn his head to see you. Rich men never know when to shut up. <laughs> and he'll take a sip. I'll chuckle. And I'll just be like, I can't stand rich people. <laughs> Only good rich one is dead or writing checks. And I'll just laugh at that again. You laugh at Vorak jokes. Vorak likes this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all, Vorak? Don't we all? <laughs> I'll say, how does an earthen, or how does a riftborn <coughs> such as your stature get mixed up with these people? With the, these rich people? Got to make money somehow. Vorak only know one thing. Two things. Vorak knows two things. Money, and how to get money from rich people. Do things they don't want you to do. And get someone else to pay for it. Vorak likes this. He drew. Mm -hmm. He mentioned his group name, right? Like the people mm -hmm. that he rides with. Would Buck have heard of him ever? History test. 
How'd you roll? Uh, natural 18. Minus 1, 17. Mm. Wow. For do you recognize the broken sunset? Yeah. Uh, no. Really? No. Yes. And it's not for a lack of trying. Mm. You're extremely confident that you don't know them. Okay. I just didn't know if they were more organized military or if they're like covert military. Neither. Sort of thing. Yeah. This well, that's is, what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, if it's somebody that like flies underneath the radar, does like it's, heinous crimes, it's but, like, very likely from that role that this is not an organized branch of anything. This is just a big group of mercenaries. Okay. That can be apparently paid exorbitant fees to do something. But this would just be one of like hundreds. This, I mean, right now the only context is you've got. Two very rich people willing to pay one guy, yeah, upwards of seventy thousand, somethings. Yeah. What was Lautz's reward? Lautz's reward like 2, 000, was right? went up to I believe twelve or sixteen hundred. Twelve. I'm just trying to put it in context of like yes. what's this the value. Is, we, got, here? we got three hundred gold each. Yes. So whatever. The, so eighteen hundred, I think, yeah. is what it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was about. 2, and that's for a relatively he was small-time ghoul collar that kind of was punching above their weight class okay but this isn't a bounty as far as you can tell right i'm just trying to like value context yeah yeah like what in the same context that when you guys have asked like what would it cost to hire the tell curry and they won't even humor you with a response Mm. this is the amount of money that we're talking about for hiring a big company of soldiers to do something we're talking tens of thousands of dollars where yeah, like here's two hundred gold. Where for the signature six, oh, it's eighteen hundred bucks. Go get this one guy. We're taught like this is a bigger scale. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Buck, Buck will sit there, minus P's and Q's. He's gonna let Faraday do his thing. This Kay. is his. This is his yeah. shtick. He's just, he's he's his hired muscle. Yeah. Quote unquote. I'll I'll throw in from your intuition uh, test. Vorak is several drinks deep, mm-hmm. um, and has also been partaking of whatever the people are smoking mm-hmm. in here. So he's the he's, he's a little very very a little fuzzy yeah. around the edges. The best of the best in fucking Sar- Carcasso. Yeah, I'll throw down a subtle a subtlety here, and I'll go. How long have you been in this line of work, Vorak? Oh, Vorak struggles to remember. Ah, uh, this. Uh, Got into business 1384? 1384. No. 85. How many years ago how many years ago would that be for us? Almost almost forty. You're talking thirty five, thirty eight years. So, okay. Somewhere in that time. It's fourteen twenty six. That's a that's a long time. My mental math skills are bad. That might be forty two years. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's fourteen. So it's, it's longer. Gotta, it's it, who wasn't fresh when they invaded Hakmanawa. That would have been fifteen years ago. Yeah, he'd have been seasoned by then. Yeah. So uh, that that was kind of what I was getting. It wasn't at. like, it's like is he fresh game. or not? Yeah, yeah. This was not his first raid, and that raid went as sad as it is for Faraday. That raid went very smoothly. Mm-hmm. They had extremely minimal casualties. Looking at this guy, any insignias? Any sort of. No, Anything? he's uh, he's he's dressed very oddly, but for where you are, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, he's got like a velvet robe on, very casual pants, no shoes, leaned back, hyper casual. You do see a sword kind of at his side, but he's nowhere near it. He's got a very casual vibe. Again, very fuzzy around the edges. Anything interesting about the sword? Would it look like a rift focus or anything of sorts? Long, Any? curved, wicked. Definitely seen some use. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, for Faraday, it's kind of rough to look at, given what it is and what it was used for. Anybody around us that seems to be looking our direction that he would be with? A lot of people in here look exactly like he does. He just, they have a they very glassy sauced. expression. Okay. Um, they're all engaged in very deep conversations with one another that neither party will probably remember. I just want to make but, sure that he's not like having yeah. like a guard or anything with him. No, uh, if you'll if you'll recall, you were told uh, he'd be alone. Winona would make sure that no one got involved while you did what you wanted to do. 
Mm. Basically said, I'll make sure the city authorities and anyone else who might care what happens to this man will not be there while you talk to him. So, take from that what you will. I will uh, then ask him, how long have the broken sunset been together? Oh, since the... Warrock forms broken sunset after fist of eastern mountains dies. It is ten... <laughs> ten, twelve years now. Eastern mountains crack and shatter. Who are the eastern mountain? Or who is the Eastern Mountain? Ah, uh, dead men. Bad luck to march under banner of dead men. So Vorok raised broken sunset banner instead. You understand. Eastern Mountain, led by the Fist of the East. He is weak man. Fingers break. He turns fists on Vorak, but Vorak is made of strong stone. In the eastern mountain, the sunset breaks you. <laughs> <laughs> Good in all that one in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how do you uh how do you get business looking like that? Not nothing nothing against you, but how I have to get hide. business looking like you <laughs> I don't. Ah, <laughs> oh, so you come to Vorak for business. I come to Vorak to discuss how to gain business. <laughs> ah, birds of a feather, my friend. Outcast of society. You want to know how Vorak do business? Vorak is perhaps looking for someone to find someone. Can you find someone for Vorak? We've had we've had success finding people. Oh, you have. Vorak has a line on lot of money. So much money. All they need. Old man, you saw him sit here, refuse to party. Boring. Old man wants to find someone. You find someone, Vorak splits payment. Vorak sits here, enjoys the atmosphere. Little man goes, gets money, we do business, yeah? Who are you looking for? Some old person, I don't know. I will pay attention later. I have my scouts looking for them now. Are you interested? Before Faraday says anything, uh, Buck's <laughs> going to place a hand on his back, kind of like lean in. Instead of money, we can see that if he wants to trade for maybe getting Bill. He's a dead man walking anyway in your book. Two birds, one stone. I'll leave it up to you, though. And I'll just return back to my similar position. How about instead of money, you help me capture somebody else? We help each other get someone. Mm -hmm. Who do you need captured? Vorok is very amenable to capturing. Vorok loves to capture. And to kill. Vorok has three loves. <laughs> this man has been haunting me for a while. And I just can't seem to get a grasp onto him. Mm -hmm. He goes by the name Bill Winchester. Oh, you are going for big dogs, but you are little fish. Go for big dogs. Vorak likes this. You must start somewhere. You will either die or you will make a great name for yourself. What is your name? What do I call you, little fish? You can call me Faraday. Ah, Faraday. Ah, you want Bill Winchester? Vorak will get you Bill Winchester. But you must get someone for me. Deal. We will shake on this, yeah? <laughs> Vorak Faraday, we shake on this, yes? 
Buck's eyes just go wide, <laughs> like, that was so quick. <laughs> Vorak will get you this bill. Get this ghost from your past who haunts you. Vorak will bring him to you. And you will get for me someone I want? They left their paper with picture on it. They don't know the oh. name of the person. Oh no. I think I know who it is. Too. Yep. <laughs> and he will unfurl a wanted poster of T. They want her. You find her for Vorak. Vorak brings you Bill. Broken or in one piece. Vorak doesn't care. He would prefer broken. But terms can be negotiated. You get this witch. I get your ghost. We trade. Fair and square. Buck just awkwardly shifts his coat like, oh no. <laughs> like, yikes. Cowboy man, you should drink with Vorak and new friend Faraday. You are so, so tense, so nervous. Ember lounges for working out the nerves. Mm. You should have a drink, wow. cowboy man. Maybe another time. Ah, you are perhaps a smoke then. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Hey, over here. Bring that right there. And someone will bring over a very long, like, series of pipes and, and tubes. Okay, breathe deep. Hold it in for a long time. Ready? Three, two, one. I'll fake it. Okay. I'm so glad Make it he didn't test. go inside. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he, uh, Buck's not gonna, Buck's not going to bring it in. He's just going to act like he is. He'll put his, like, thumb over the nozzle and yeah. then do it like that. Make it a dirt test because he's going to slap you on the back and be like, in! Twelve. Twelve. Okay. A little bit seeps through. Yeah. It, and it immediately, you're like, oh, no. <laughs> you just feel very heavy, a little sluggish. You're like, oh, boy. But you shake off a majority of the effect. Okay. That is good, cowboy man. Mm -hmm. Breathe. Yeah. This is good. Wait five, ten minutes. Have more. You'll feel great. Uh, will do. So, Faraday, you find Silver Witch. I will get you, Bill. You must get Witch before I can get Bill. I will need money to get men to get Bill. Silver Witch brings money. I've heard the Silver Witch is just as dangerous as Bill. Ah, well, all I know about Bill is he's a nasty businessman. But I hear this witch can move mountains, can crack the earth, can kill with bare hands. Vorok is made of earth, so he's a little nervous, but <laughs> wants to see. <laughs> but you, you are not made of earth. You are made of cloth. <laughs> but you have strong spirit. Silver Witch cannot break strong spirit. Isn't that right, cowboy man? Ah, you know the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I must, uh, I must take this back to my crew. Ah. And okay. see if they're comfortable. Okay. Well, Vorak begins hunting Ernest tomorrow morning. So do not wait too long. For if I find Silver Witch on my own, we have no deal for Bill. But perhaps a wager. 300 gold piece you are looking to get started. Consider it an investment. 300 gold piece, whoever gets Silver Witch first. I get her first, you pay me. You get her first, I pay you, then I get you Bill. Two for one deal, small fish. What do you say? I have one condition. Okay, okay. I hold on to the witch until you get Bill. Oh, I like this. You are good. You should know. The buck's sweating. You should know until we agree. Vorak is open to discussion of price and payment. But once we agree, deal does not change. Fair deal. You don't have to agree to the whole deal now. But just... <laughs> I want that known beforehand. On the terms, essentially. I warned you about the terms never change once we agree. I agree to the terms never changing. Okay, that is good, yes! 
Little fish, you know how to bargain. This is good. Okay. So, you get the witch. You hold on to her until I get Bill. Yeah? But I will have to show that we have her. In order to get money. I will need money for men to get Bill. But you get her first. We show off, we work, we get some money. Yeah? I'll lean into uh, Buck and whisper. What do you think? It's way above my pay grade, hombre. I don't... Why do you whisper to Cowboy Man? He's sticking mad. No offense. Not yet. He's, he's, uh, he's smarter than me. Yeah, you know what? Vorak has someone similar. Does lots of thinking for Vorak. Vorak is ready to crack skulls, break necks. Not a big fan of pencil pushing. Cowboy man, you do not look like pencil pusher. <laughs> I push a lot of lead. Ah, <laughs> he is funny though. Pencil lead. Vorak understands this. Mm -hmm. That is good joke, cowboy man. Okay. Vorak is in town for three, four weeks. You have until then or until I find Silver Witch. I find Silver Witch, I am buying ship. I am gone. Vorak wants to see the whole world. Vorak has seen the great deserts to the south. He wishes to see the tundras to the north. They say ice falls from the sky in greater quantities than it does here. I'll look at him and I'll say... I'll be back in one hour to make a deal. One hour? One hour. One hour passes quickly in the Ember Lounge. My crew is... Vorak will be here. My crew is close. That I want to see if we are confident. My crew also is lunch. close. I <laughs> 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 see how we do this. I like you, little fish. You will come back. You will talk to Vorak. We will make a deal, yeah? Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say one more thing, Vorak, as I'm getting up. Yeah. How many people are on your payroll? Oh, right now. Uh, Vorak, general of three legions. Couple thousand men I have not counted in a while. I think you should ask for, for more than 70,000, and I'll start walking out. More than 70. Little fish knows math. We will do this. <laughs> I'm just going to hook Faraday okay. by the arm and hot step out as quickly as possible. I'm yeah. like, oh, God. And I'll, I'll tap on Bud's little hand. One. Okay. As we start to enter, so uh, exit so that they know the, uh, all is good. very rich old man is currently failing horrendously at, at flirting with a, a few individuals that are pretty deep into the the pipes in the sauce and he's like mm -hmm. I, 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 perhaps perhaps um, uh, perhaps uh, 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 an arrangement can be struck I, uh, 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 man of man of stature and money stamina and, uh, yes <laughs> profound <laughs> vigor <laughs> I'm like a, a honey badger life quantities <laughs> off the charts <laughs> yeah and they're all like no you look like a raisin <laughs> Faraday being like confident that. right now mm -hmm. after n somewhat negotiating yeah. will put my hand on his back and say just tell him how much you're willing to pay him <laughs> I would never proposition so I, I have to go I'm an elected official I'm <laughs> he will uh, see himself out the three of you outside the metal door swings wide as this old man just Shuffles out, kind of adjusts his coat and his hat, and he goes, oh, I never, and just marches away. I'm, there's a low hiss. I give out a low hiss as This bump for waiting outside. That was a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> he might have turned around. <laughs> Followed swiftly Where by uh, Faraday and Buck. Oh, the, it, I'm going to um, I'm gonna f start following the old rich man. Okay. Do we see her running off to the I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to be stealthy, like blend in, right? So, yeah. like, I can't be. I just. You hear me hiss, Callum and Adelaide, and then I. I start following that man. All right. And I'm gonna follow T because okay. I am going to literally tell them 
who he's after yeah. and why he's here and the plan that could ensue. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Buck's gonna stop T from going. Like, he'll wrap his arms out and, like, literally try to pick her up and move her to not go. I'm gonna slip so. out. So. <laughs> because he's like, what are you doing? Agility. Okay. Agility with difficulty. Oh, yeah. Because you got a little bit of that smoke in your system. Yeah. Just a little. That's a... You're a little fuzzy around the edges. Bro, I could not have rolled even more poorly than what I just did. <laughs> Fourteen. Five. <laughs> Buck, a six in Buck's the head, he's like, difficulty. wait, T, you're in danger. And it's more of a, hold on there. And it's like an arm kind of just slides down your back. And you're like, see ya. And I'm, I'm just saying, I, I will be back. I need to see where this man is going. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, T, I don't think that's a smart decision. But I'm going to follow you for 30 minutes. You, like you'll follow me? Okay. And I'm going to head back here after 30 minutes are up. It's likely I won't follow him for this long. I know this man. They're after you, T. I know he's after me. Vorok is after you. The man that killed my father is after you. And he likely is, from this man. He has struck a deal that I have not agreed to for me to bring you in to him for Bill Winchester. I have not agreed to this deal, but if we can come up with a plan, we can get Bill Winchester, him, and keep you safe all at the same time. But it's very risky. I don't think any of the paths that are set out before me are not risky, so... I'm not opposed. He is in Fletcher's Roost for three to four weeks, hunting you. Hmm. It's, 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 it's likely from this man. This is Adolphus. Who is Adolphus? I used to work for him. He's a duke. And we're still following him at this yeah. point. Yeah. Is he, like, kind of just wandering around, meandering? Is no, he he's walking with, with a purpose? purpose. Okay. He heads a little ways up Fiddler's Lane, and a very fine silver carriage will wheel around a corner. He will climb inside. Give me an awareness test. Catch me, Kellen. I'm falling over. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! I'm so aware. <laughs> I am so so aware. I hate this man. <laughs> you know what? Let's. Add, I'm gonna add some extra sauce. I can throw a mastery down, and if you want, if you need more, or you think you're good, it's a natty twenty. Oh I'm god. Die. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. You're good. Oh, plus you already rolled. Never mind. It's yeah. Twenty two with the. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Callum's just dragging Buck, and just which is normal, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're just. T, as this man is getting into the carriage, there is a leather-gloved hand that will hold the carriage door open. Not out of any reverence for him, but more out of a sign of impatience. The black leather is very well-crafted, and exceedingly familiar because you rolled so well. As you see the gloved left hand of the Nighthawk holding the door open for this duke. And sat in this carriage, glimpsed only briefly as the door shuts, is a woman with olive skin, long black hair, currently unconscious, with just the slightest hint of a belly. As Maria Winchester is also in this carriage. What? Sat right next to the Nighthawk. As a few weeks ago, specifically the night the Tal Curry arrived in Fletcher's Roost, a woman with a gunshot wound went staggering through a few streets 
and bumped into a few members of the Tel Curry, who, knowing she was in danger, brought her back to see their physician, who helped patch her up and keep her safe. And during her recovery, a few doors down, Buck Winchester assisted in the murder of Sam Tully as Maria Winchester was still recovering. You couldn't which is smell how, that she was there. Which is how <laughs> Nighthawk <laughs> knew Maria's voice. Mm. She had spent several weeks recuperating. However, as that carriage door shuts, T, you glimpse these three individuals all at once. Your brain kind of reels for a moment. And that carriage will very rapidly depart from the city. I the entire city of Fletcher's Roost? It's leaving the city? Yes. Okay. Headed to the docks. Like, fast like a train fast? or well, Fast like, like it doesn't horse. seem to care if people are getting out of the way in time. Okay. It is on the move. Uh, I'm going to hiss again. Like, this bastard man. We need to get back. Uh, that Maria was in that carriage. We need to tell Buck. D uh, they still have the hand, don't they? Who did I put it on? I don't even know who I put it Adelaide. on. Adelaide. Oh, Adelaide. Yeah. It's on one of the Mackenzies. Tell them to come here. Perhaps I'll, we can... I'll double tap. Okay. Come uh, here now. I guess we, they don't know where we are. Yeah, huh? I'll... I'll if Adelaide will hold the hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have Bud. Oh, I Bud's have Bud. Bud. That's right. I have yeah, the yeah, hand because yeah. I was okay. trying to be inconspicuous. Adelaide will hold Bud like dowsing rods and ask him to point <laughs> in <laughs> the nice, directions nice, nice, we nice. need to go. <laughs> My hand is over there. <laughs> Let's go. Like, is it yeah. feasible to follow that carriage? Quickly. Not for a long time. No. Okay. Probably Short term? Really yeah, but this yeah, is yeah. booking it. It's but it looks go. like it's heading to the docks. Okay. It's definitely headed in the direction of the docks. Callum okay. Buck, follow me. Uh, I don't feel so good, Cal. <laughs> Just innocent. We'll man. start. We'll start walking. <laughs> we should start walking back to them so we can meet halfway, right? Or do you just want to stay here? I guess I. I'll just stay. I. I will stay here until uh -huh. the carriage is out of sight. Okay. And then I will fall. I'll start following you back. If you would like to head back and meet them, so halfway. we can meet them yeah. halfway. So we can discuss. Have extra time to discuss the plan. <gasps> so. Okay. The few of you head back to meet up with Bud's hands kind of going. <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd it go? Did you murder your father's murderer? My father's murderer is still inside Ember's Lounge, and he has made a deal that I have told. Offered a deal that I have told T. A deal with you? Yes. And you would work with him? Only to get to him. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. The deal is... You all right? <laughs> hmm? Are you okay? It's a little fuzzy. What did, he, what did he do? He had a little bit of, you know what, the good good. I'm going to write that in my notes. <laughs> good, good. This is important for, <laughs> yeah. for research. Next time yeah. I need to have a conversation with Buck, yeah. and I need him to be more agreeable. Um, <laughs> Get to, the good good. Yeah. To open it up a little bit, because it probably would have been said at some point, uh, Buck is currently under the effects of a drug called Slipstream. Cool. Which causes you to just get all nice and fuzzy around the edges. Grand stream of life, baby. So Vorok is his name, the murderer of my father okay and essentially the killer of my town he has struck a deal and his deal or has offered a deal i shouldn't say struck has offered a deal that we bring in the silver witch also known as t and we trade her for bill winchester cool moniker 
I have altered the deal that we get to keep T until he brings us Bill. But that was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> the danger with that is he has about 2,000 men on hire. Depending upon how many men bring in Bill Winchester. I mean, I hate to say it, but if you kill the person paying the paychecks, I don't think they're too terribly loyal after the fact. Yes, but he might be a hard one to kill. I think Bud Why? Bud can do some damage. He has dirt on his skin. He's dirty. He's a, he is a rift born with earth powers. Mm. You might be able to do damage too by ripping him apart. <laughs> Oh, that would be my pleasure. Like a <laughs> Lego. <Shredding him. laughs> it took a dark turn. Let me get this straight. You want to pretend to give up tea in exchange for Bill Winchester. And let's say that that all goes off without a hitch. And we get to walk away with both of them. What is your plan with this Torok character after that? My plan is to find out who hired him to murder Hawk Monowin. Or to take to destroy my village. So you want to keep climbing the ladder and find the one who gave the orders? Exactly. But I believe T has a, a pressing update that might take precedence. There's the worst... Okay. That man that I followed, I used to work for him. Doing and what? He funded my research. Research for what? That's not the point. Ed. You're smart. I love research. <laughs> I love science. science. I will go into that later. He got into that carriage with Nighthawk and your wife, Maria... <laughs> Just sober hits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> up. If, you did, if you didn't sober, if I was gonna slap yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. No. That like. That's like <laughs> we all slap him. Just <laughs> 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 takes ten damage. Mark's um, like, wait, what? Back to back. Focus, to back. man. You're like, what did you say? <laughs> back, get a hold of yourself. <sighs> <sighs> Come on. And in there was his wife. <laughs> 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 uh, where Where did they uh, head off to? It It looks like the carriage went off towards the docks. And I just beeline for the docks. I have 20 minutes to strike the deal. <laughs> do I do it? I'm gone. I'm, I know I'm, you're gone. Yeah, I was like, I'm not but I'm looking at T, and I'm looking at you guys. Oh, my God. So that I can... I, I'll there. go back by myself and I, tell them where we'll, I will we'll get I will do him. this deal with you if you agree to kill this Zordog once you get your information. Zordog? V Vorok. <laughs> Vorok. <laughs> It's happened. Oh you God. said Torog. You said Zordok. <laughs> We're getting further and further. <laughs> I was like, I'll give him an easy name to remember. Zordok. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever watch Zardok? <laughs> uh, yes. yes. It's a great movie. Ah, uh, Yes, the man Zeth. I will look at you and I said, we are not going to lose you. And I will start walking back. And Bud will reattach his hand and okay. come with me. And are, okay. are you going after the carriage as well? Are you? What are you doing? Well, I can't. I don't think I should go back with Faraday. I don't yeah, think. that would not uh, be a good idea. Bud, so. would, Bud would spectral shroud you, but that doesn't necessarily so. make you I fully will go, immune to being. Uh, seen. I will follow sure. the carriage with Buck. Okay. Okay. Carriage, Ember Lounge. Who's going where? Carriage. Carriage. Uh, the Mackenzies are in a <laughs> stupor <laughs> in the street. <laughs> everyone just goes, poo! <laughs> they're like, what? And we so we have family go. drama! So, the, the Mackenzies <laughs> experienced zero things. Yeah. Everyone else experienced at least one of the things. Yeah. And everything seems like it's really bad right now. And they all just ran away. Yeah. And they're just stuck for a moment uh -huh. in the street. I'll okay. get back to you. Sweet. Okay. So, carriage, carriage, Ember Lounge. Ember Lounge. Okay. <laughs> As the McKenzie's are like... Just watching everybody just... 
just with different um, directions. So that just happened. <laughs> <laughs> Drama. <laughs> Kel's like, we're mates. they're right behind me, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> and Adelaide's like, no, they all left. <laughs> Everyone's gone. Okay. Uh, well, those of you chasing after the carriage. Running off in the direction of the docks where you've been so very many times. I'm staying within, like, crowds. I'm not... Okay. I'm not, like, making it obvious. I'm not risking anything right now. Okay. It will slow you down. That's fine. To move... That's fine. Unknowably. I will barrel through people if I have to. Move! <laughs> Get out of the way. It's easy to be stealthy when you have someone else being a big distraction. <laughs> yeah, 100%. So. If, I, if Buck had to, he'd fire his gun to disperse crowds. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. All right. Well... Having heard that Nighthawk and Maria and this Duke all got into a carriage, Buck, arriving at the docks a few minutes ahead of tea if she's moving quietly, you will see lines and lines of carriages boarding and unboarding, effectively taxi services getting you to a dock. Many of them are nice. Many of them are just sort of regular service cabs. Most of them look similar to others. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a needle in a haystack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You arrive at a full-on, like, carriage yard. And you're like, this one's engine is still warm. <laughs> <laughs> this one matches the tracks, the wheels. But arriving, you'll see a few hundred people getting onto various ships, getting off of other ships. Lots of finely dressed individuals. Lots of people dressed like you. I'm looking through everything that I possibly can. Buck's eyes are darting every which way, what have you. He's just hes just frantically. He's, he's not doing anything by the book or anything. It is yeah. panic. It's just panic mode looking. Full on panic mode. Yeah. So whatever, whatever that gets me, I'll just be looking around boats. From the boats, surveying from docks to carriages kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And just looking for any sign of this pompous a-hole and Nighthawk, mm-hmm. whatever. They should maybe stick out a little bit more, but... Give an awareness test. <coughs> no longer with difficulty. Cause and you've anybody else want to... Your, uh, your fuzziness your is worn off. I'm going to throw in my free one, too, on top of... Yeah, that's what it's for. 19. You are right about one thing. Nighthawk sticks out like a sore thumb. Dressed all in black, standing almost a foot shorter than the average person, but you just see that impermeable shadow through this whole crowd. Um, Currently, a slip of paper is being handed to the Duke from Nighthawk as he is turning and straightening his, his coat out. Gives a curt nod before spinning on his heels and heading on to one of the ships. The Nighthawk does not board. She will turn and head back towards one of the carriages. It will see you and in turn T come marching through the crowd. Uh, yeah, Buck pulls out his revolver and is going to walk, start walking towards Nighthawk. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm just she will... deadpan towards her. Yeah, she'll see the I'll gun leave. come out. Put a hand on the carriage door to open it. Doesn't seem rushed or hurried in any way. Okay. Just boarding the carriage. A purple and black horse is hitched to the front of this carriage. Plumes of blue and green smoke pooling off its mane. And it sets off riding at a much more reasonable pace. But in no way is waiting for either of you. Um, Looking back to where the Duke got on. Mm-hmm. Didn't see Maria mm-hmm. there with him, or he wasn't like carrying he, or holding anybody? He appeared to be boarding alone. Okay. He went on a ship? Mm-hmm. He's getting on a ship. Uh, can I get any other distinguishing features about the carriage itself? Because Buck will kind mm-hmm. of keep up pace. Yeah, trying very, to just, like, look. very fine silver uh, with black inlay. Um, no like big symbols or anything on the side. It does appear to be a personalized carriage. Um, in that it's not like for hire, 
mm. but it is being pulled by a blight mare. Okay. Oh, okay. Which is the yeah one way that it was a little easier to follow <clears throat> than perhaps it would otherwise have been. Yeah, I'm going to try to sprint up to the carriage door and try to jump onto the side of it to look inside. Well, well, Buck races down a carriage and T races down a buck. Faraday arrives back in the <laughs> other <laughs> I'll walk in and I'll look for Vorak. He's he's now like laying on the bench. One hand kind of over his face like this, but one eye will open and go, Little fish! Come back to swim in the pond. You know, I've I have to admit, little fish, you surprised me. I thought little fish would not come back. My Tears. crew, my crew has agreed. Your crew agrees. You will find the silver witch. You will find the silver witch. Okay. So, let us strike terms, yeah? You will find the silver witch. You will show me proof that you have her. I will show this proof to our employer. They will pay half now. They will pay half later. Vorak can work with this half of the deal. Then, I will get you Bill Winchester with money and men. I bring you Bill, I give you Bill. You get Bill, I get Silver Witch. We are both happy. Yeah? Who is the person that's a after the Silver Witch, if I may ask? Ah, this old man. He is oh. some duke. The one, the one that was flirting with the girls? Yeah. Told him just pay him? Yeah, he is a... Uh, the one you just chased? He is not a hit with... Uh, Anyone, really. He's oh, maybe he pissed off the Silver Witch. Ah, that is uh, what I am gathering, yeah. He says that she has wronged him, but... Vorog does not care why anyone wants anyone, if they are willing to pay. So, you will bring me Silver Witch. I will show this Duke that I have Silver Witch. I will get you, Bill. We will exchange, and Little Fish becomes Big Fish. I'll put my hand out. Yeah! <laughs> Little fish! Well, Faraday. Vora happy to do business. Good luck catching Silver Witch. I hear she is, uh, you know, all those things I said earlier. Very powerful. We'll see about that. <laughs> I like your style, Little Fish. And then I'll start. I'll start walking towards the door, mm -hmm. and Bud will spectral shroud me, mm -hmm. just make it mystic. Yeah, and we will leave. Okay. And I'm gonna jump up onto the top of the building just to kind of see if anybody's around. Okay. And I will sit down. And as Bud was sitting there in anger, listening to Vorok talk, the rock that Bud has been holding onto broke. And what is inside that rock are 12 crests of all the families that died that night. Oh, baby. And they still display the pictures of all the families. And I sit down and I weep. Well, Adelaide and Callum, where did you decide to go? Um, the two of them have a discussion. Yeah. About Lashed how there's a, there's a lot of foot in this world that is bigger than their research. Uh, although they want to find the lab and there are a lot of mysteries around it, their new friends have pressing issues and the length of their conversation has made the carriage too far away to follow at this point reliably. Yeah. So we better go make sure that Faraday's okay, especially cause he's by himself. Yeah. Okay. The two of you walking back, knowing to be looking up for Faraday most of the time, we'll just see. Just a little feet <laughs> dangling over the side of a building, or maybe just the signs that somebody kind of vaulted their way up onto the roof. Uh, Adelaide will ask Callum to keep an eye out for, for T and Buck, and Adelaide will um, find a ladder. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> okay. she's closer to Faraday than Callum is. Yeah. So she'll find a way up. Okay. Uh it's doable, but give me an agility test to see how long it takes. To find a ladder? Just to get up there. Oh, just to get oh, okay. up there. Okay. Agility? You, yeah, the average person could climb a building if they had to. Eleven. Eleven. 
It's a little messy, Faraday. You're kind of having a moment, but you have enough time to maybe clean yourself up or just be open and vulnerable. People love that. I am actually. <laughs> we'll, we'll add a little flair to this. Oh my yeah. God. The crests are. Bud is currently forcing the crests to float around me, and I'm wa- I'm looking at them, but I have no hood on in the smoke. And my own family crest, which is melted to my body with that like frontal plate, yeah. is showing. So you like, like it it's like see. smoke around your head. So I yes. can't see it. I mean, still. if you walked into the smoke, you okay. could Damn most it. likely <laughs> see who what I look like. <laughs> Faraday. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. If, Faraday? You, if you oh, sat down, if you sat down next to me, you would see everything that's going on inside there. Is that Kylo Ren? Can I kiss him? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's a little spooky. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, I'm not one to breathe foreign <laughs> uh, air molecules. It's a good but thing you didn't go in the Ember Lounge. I will start to encroach, and I will just ask. Like, Faraday is. Are you okay in there? And I'll put my hand right on the side there, and I will, like, you can come and sit if you would like. Oh, and I will, I will pay, I will pay no attention to putting my hood back on, and I will not, like, necessarily indulge in her seeing my face. Okay. Um. So if you do come over and sit down, I'll do, I will accept the invite. <laughs> and just trust Bud's you. little gas face, like wherever <laughs> she looks. <laughs> <laughs> um. No. Uh, uh, uh. No peeking. And I will look you straight in the eyes, and I'll say, these family crests were all the people that Vorok murdered. And they're just floating around in a circle around us right now. So you're definitely angry at him. That's quite understandable. Is this because you're working with him in a way? And it's reconciling that. I'm angry because he's useful to us now. Mm. I think he was the one that completely led the charge on the murder of my entire city or town. Uh, I want to look at Bud real quick. Is is Bud conveying any sort of emotion in this moment as well? Since Bud is an empathetic em- undead creature um he is definitely sad but he also has anger in his eyes because he saw the person that murdered yeah but you can tell i've definitely been crying do you think that um any other type of justice would quell your emotion or do you think only in death would you find peace if he proves to be useful in getting what we need, he might have extra days to live. But I think only in death his crew seems to thrive off of taking payment and pillaging people's homes. They have a deal for 70,000 gold to go after Merit McDonough. Yes. And I'm sure it's a very similar deal to what they did to my my town, my village. And I think that needs to be stopped. But it also needs to be stopped from the top. Well, do you think that perhaps preventing another catastrophe that you've lived through and giving up an easy way to get Bill Winchester is perhaps the way to go. And you just end it here instead of doing this deal. I think he will eventually hit Murat McDonough, but I don't think he's going right away. I think he is searching for T as a number one priority. Unless he's sending a legion, which he is in charge of about three, on their own. This is perhaps a weird pivot, but if you... Taking what you've said about stopping it from the top, what... Sounds like there's a bit of a two-birds situation where the person who is paying for 
for T is the one who's also paying for this next genocide, perhaps. Stopping that person would fix both problems. It would. And we don't need this Vorok at all. But what if we could lure these top dogs in by taking over Vorok's position? Slay Vorok. Take over. And then slay them from the top. Anybody that comes. Well, it's definitely a conversation that I think we should have as a group. But as far as the immediate situation goes, maybe we should make sure that the other two are okay if they're following after this evil person who's orchestrating all of this. If he ends up capturing T over there at the docks, then we lose all of our avenues. Yeah. And I'll put my hood back on. You gonna be okay, Faraday? I'll be fine. You sure? Mm-hmm. And I'll put my hand out to help you down. I'll give him a hug anyway. I'll, hu I'll, hug, you, I'll hug you back. Let's go make sure they're Friendship. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's yep, and I'll, 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 I'll essentially jump down with you on my back or whatever. Okay. Okay. Well, the two of you land as Callum's like... <clears throat> Have you spotted them, Callum? Nope. No <laughs> one's come by yet. All right, we're going to hurry and find him at the docks. And Bud will stop spectral shrouding me, but all of those crests will be floating in his ghastly body right now until I decide what to do with it later. Okay. All right. Well, Buck and T hey. chasing down a carriage. <gasps> oh. I will throw out, we are entering our first skill challenge of the campaign. It's, it is a best of three between the two of you to either catch up to or somehow stop the carriage. Okay, so I'm going to try to make a little a little pothole Okay, for little the pot carriage. Hole. Yeah. Um, target number is three on the D20, so above a three and you're fine. Okay. That's the misfire. 13? Yeah. Okay. 13 plus 3, 16. You're able to make a pothole that pretty heavily jostles the carriage. I'll give you guys a success. Yes. It'll slow it down slightly for a bit as Buck's like... <sighs> uh, running down. Okay. There doesn't seem to be anybody driving this carriage. It's just the blight mare There's the blight pulling mare. it along. But you have one success. No failures so far. Okay. The two of you keep running. The carriage hangs a left. It starts heading down Fiddler's Lane. I'm going to try to, ye being a person of, just being a tamer in general, trying to command the Blightmare to yield. Um, and I'm, I'll try to kind of run up and, like, try to keep up with pace with the pothole to grab, like, any reins and just yank. Okay. So I don't know if I could do, like, a taming or something with It'd that. Be a taming test. Uh, your target number is 25. This is not your Blightmare. I know. Yeah. Fig Obviously, I yeah. don't have to tell you that. But <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Target number is 25. Anybody else want to jump on for Because this is exceedingly difficult to be like, stop and try to like grab For your what? Your taming? Yeah. Okay. Don't away. we all have mastery? We all have yeah. mastery. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You do. I'll do. I'll do 25. You. Okay. So Godspeed. Oh, God. I rolled three. Three. Four. Okay. So 12. 13, 3, 16, 16, 16 4, 20, 20 3, so it's 23, 23 plus my 6. Okay. <gasps> 29. So you are able to run up, put one hand on the Took bridle everybody. for the blight mare, which Check it off. bucks its head pretty hard, but you're able to hold on without like snapping your wrists. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm but a it, wrangler, baby. Yeah. Ranch. And it does, it do be making a lot of noise, but you're partially steering as you've got a handle on it so you're pulling its head to one side yeah the carriage is kind of doing one of these maneuvers i'll let two go okay if you um, do anything. i'm gonna just try to like jump on the carriage itself okay you're gonna launch yourself on there with uh earth or are you gonna just try to jump on there i'm just gonna try to jump on there okay it's gonna be an agility test oh my god 
that was that would have been okay. Oh, one. Ah! Ah! Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> you run your little heart out. You're grasping at the thing, and it's still there's like this weird jostle to it as Buck's kind of hanging off the blight mare. Pulling it from side to side, the carriage is rocking back and forth. You're not quite able to grasp it. You're at two and one. Yeah, I'm gonna try to. G I'm gonna try to pull the rest of the way up onto the carriage. Okay. Just to try to like angle myself to get up there. Um, don't know if that's part of yes. the skill test because I have an idea. Once I'm on there. Uh, give me a might, and we'll go from there. Oh, man, do it. Come on, come on. Nine. Nine. Okay. Uh, plus zero. I got plus zero. All right. You slap a second hand on the reins, and you're trying to swing yourself up, but the Blightmare is actively fighting against you, Yeah. trying to throw you off. You're able to keep that one hand on there, but you're now kind of dragging. That Blightmare picks up a little bit of speed. Use, using, or but do you have something? We're at, we're at two and two. Can you treadmill the carriage so it moves in place, and then you can just walk up to it? Can I do that? Or you can grab the Like raise uh, up the earth and try Okay, let's try that. And it just snaps it going forward. We'll try to do that. You're saying I had a good idea. Mm -hmm. Trying to treadmill the carriage? Okay. Try to treadmill it. She was like, I don't know how to do a medieval treadmill. No. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm only looking at the misfire score. It's a full carriage with a horse, and Buck is also on the it. firing line. You per know what? I'm going to make you roll before I tell you the target number. I know it. I've decided what it is. Conversation. <laughs> okay. So make your arcane test. Whatever happens, happens. Do I get to add the you. three again from my uh, I'll my say wands. you could pull another Ooh. card feasibly. Okay. No, you get six on the test and a free mastery die on it. Okay. Okay. Godspeed. Come on. Wow. Okay. Well. I'm so roll? scared. Did you roll mastery for me? Yes. Yeah, and it's a one. What's your total? <laughs> it's the, the problem is the misfire. Is, did I misfire? I'll, I'll let you do your math first. It's 16 with all the, the Even perks. with his plus one? Yeah. Okay. Oof, mama. So because because you used ones, what is the mastery die? Oh, wait. I didn't one? add that. Six, um, 21? What's the mastery die from the ones? Your mastery die, D6. One. One. So you have a 12 on the, on the D20 with the mastery die from the ones. And yeah. then I gave her a mastery. Yes. Which was another one. So 13? Yeah. Okay. I've mouthed it to Joel as you were rolling. 13 was your misfire score. <gasps> so if you were below a 13. Sweet mama. Oh, my God. So <laughs> so here's Sweat. what happens when you hit the misfire score on magic. You get what you want with consequences. Okay. Uh, well. Buck, as you are currently being dragged, wrestling around in your belt pouch, trying to draw a sword... You manage to get the sword free, and you're like, T, do something! T, you just dig your heels in and grab the earth and pull it back towards you. Blightmare immediately rolls its front two legs down and goes chin first into the cobblestones. Make an agility test. 16. 16. So, Buck... Take nine points of bludgeoning damage as a horse lands on you. That's fair. I'll take it. Your wrist rolls, but doesn't break. Thank God. <laughs> as you go tumbling off to the side by this carriage. It's my shooting wrist. <laughs> send, you for a, send you for a, a, little, a little tumble. Everyone in the streets immediately like starts screaming and, yeah. and running yeah. as this is going down. It's the, her, the witch. As the carriage <laughs> collides into the blight mare. <laughs> who will, as it's being hit, be knocked to zero and just be turning into undead energy. The <sighs> carriage will stop and flip. I'll let Devin roll. No, don't do that. Don't, don't do that to me. You guys can use mastery on it as normal, but it's... It, I'll say... We'll say it's endurance to roll successfully out of this. I would al I'll allow agility as well, but this is plus zero for me regardless. Oh, uh, it's not for Buck. Huh? 
Oh. You're just oh, rolling yeah. the die. Yeah, yeah. I'm just... I'll let you roll it because it's for Maria. I know. I'll put what's, her life what's in your What's the hands. test? Agility. Agility. Or so endurance. we can throw masks. Well, if she master. is what I said she is, she technically has a D6. It's agility or endurance. Okay. Throw it on there. I don't have a mastery. I have both. mastery in both. That's so. my last. That's my last mastery. Oh my god. Too. Four here. Okay. A one. Okay. Thirteen. Okay. Thirteen Rolled plus bad. four plus I, one. Whatever, and then I don't know what modifiers are for okay. her. Okay. Thirteen, four, and one. So on the die, we're talking an eighteen. No, I no. That is 13. with. That's with them. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Then I don't know what our modifiers are. Okay. Roll for the Nighthawk here. Okay. As the carriage goes and flips and lands on the roof, the silver on the outside is not the most resilient metal. And it's definitely not designed to be upended as the carriage itself weighs somewhere in the vein of about 800 pounds. As the carriage lands and scrapes and slides and is slowly just crunching and sliding down, there's a brief pulse of powerful magic, which to T... It's a little loud. Sorry, getting distracted. As uh, T, you'll get a very potent smell of cinnamon. As the carriage... Continues to buckle, but the central core of it, there is a cube that does not collapse as it slides. Buck, as you're standing there, kind of like picking yourself up, you're like, I don't think anything's broken, but you're very like cobblestone scuffed. Mm -hmm. T, you realize the earth where the carriage was is still moving. Mm. And it's just kind of toiling and sliding amongst itself. Since I count a success with consequences as both a pass and a fail, mm -hmm. <laughs> we we're, pass and we're, fail? we're still stuck. We are <laughs> at three and three. Which means this cube Time of carriage is now on a conveyor belt that is about to be crunched into the earth Okay. in between the roads. So... I will say, Buck can try to pull Maria out, or T can try to stop the carriage from going under. But one of you has to go first. Okay. So my thing with my Trapper's Kit Wrangler's Rope, could mm -hmm. I use like my toolkit to be able to like get in there and like wrap her around to pull her out to where it's not necessarily using my might, but it's using my skills with the tools to essentially pull her out? feasible what I'm getting at is you both have exactly one action you can take oh it's one or the other no you you each have one action you can take you oh I see before this happens okay. you have three gotcha. seconds I to see okay act that's that's what Buck is um, going for disregarding okay. his own safety that is what Buck would do okay, okay. well and then I'm gonna try to stop <laughs> to try to stop it. Okay. Um, so T's check is going to determine the target number for Buck. Because there's a non-zero chance she fails, you tie yourself to Maria, you fail to pull her out, and you go too. I know. Oh, I'm <laughs> like, I'm when Buck is willing to die here. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Here's me thinking, oh, they're just going to fight Morak today. It'll be fine. Oh. <laughs> No, we made friends. This yeah. is Dragon Ball Z. All right, T. <laughs> <laughs> T, you're up first. Um, Arcane. Arcane. Okay. And then... Um, Misfire score this time is eight. And then... Uh, <laughs> do I have to re-roll for the wands? Wait. Um, right now, you have one action. How many do... do uh, okay, so d don't... Okay. I see, I see, I see. Only I got you. you, okay. Only for you, okay. Yeah. Like so your Rift King can't use magic. Would you add? One. Like Bud's got arcane. Okay. Again. So. All my masteries are ones. Okay. Don't say anything. Buck. Make a. Make a test with your. I told Trapper's you. kit. Okay. 
Is, but that's just a separate role. We can't help there. This uh, is something that if I you am. have if you have Go exploration masteries, uh, we can talk about it. Hold on. Uh, from what I can see, Tia rolled a three on the twenty, and the misfire's an eight. So, as you fling the carriage door open and lob a rope <laughs> just immediately in towards Maria. It lashes around her arm. You're able to just lift it up so that it's not going to choke her. Yeah. As you start pulling her out. There is no Nighthawk in the carriage right now. I don't give a shit about that. <laughs> as you, Sneaky sneak. As you are pulling the rope, the carriage is just being crunched into the earth. As Tia's like, stop. A hole opens and begins to swallow it. As you are now holding Maria kind of like firemen wrapped under a rope, unconscious over a pit that dips no fewer than 80 feet. T, the earth beneath your feet... I fall into a pit. ...also begins to sort of swallow you. Okay. Um, (laughs) Bye-bye. As your ankles start to grind and crunch. Give me the agility test. In the end, her roll was a uh, a ten. Yes. Okay. But the misfire. Yeah. Um, okay. Ten. Ten. Mm-hmm. Okay. Take eight points of earth damage. Okay. As your ankles are kind of ground down, nothing breaks, nothing crunches, but you're able to kind of leap out of there. Okay. As the silver carriage just falls into the earth. I'm sweating <laughs> so hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. In the docks, there is now a cavernous hole where a very prominent carriage has been swallowed by earth and magic enacted by a woman with silver hair. A small price to pay. (laughs) (laughs) Buck, as you haul Maria out of the hole in the earth she's alive largely unharmed as the cubic magic that was placed within there seemed to be just enough to prevent the carriage itself from being ground into paste to turning her into a smear on the pavement as Maria is hauled up to safety Nighthawk will walk out of a nearby Alleyway, dusting herself off and cursing furiously. What is wrong with both of you? We had it under control. You. Had what? Everything. Why did you tip the carriage? You had his wife. And I have had her for months. She has been fine with us. Okay, well why wouldn't you bring her back? I didn't know you were looking for her. You said her name and everything. You knew who I was looking for. Don't play stupid. (laughs) Ah, the carriage was so expensive. And the two of you have caused such a ruckus. You should leave now. All three of you. Okay. For what it's worth, the duke had been paid a king's ransom to make sure your child arrived unharmed. Excuse me? You don't know? No. No, just look down at Marie and... Better get her looked at after you flipped the carriage a pregnant woman was riding in. Our physician is unskilled in birthing. But that duke will pay a pretty penny for you. More than enough to repair the carriage. I would leave now. Then I'll, I'm going to start walking yeah, away. Yeah, I'm just, just going to oh. turn away. Uh, Buck being a sarcastic jackass, he's going to toss one coin down at her feet and then like, for your next carriage. She'll kick it back. For your wife. I'll leave it. I'll help you carry. Yeah. Okay. 
There's murmurs all around you. That's the silver witch. They said not to approach her. She ate a carriage with the earth. <laughs> I think we could take her. And there are several unsavory types, brandishing weapons, that are all wondering if this is their shot. I'm going to look at you, Buck, and I'm be like, perhaps it's best if I leave the two of you. And I'm going to, before you can even say anything, I'm going to slip off and start running. Yeah, I'll fireman, uh, or I'll, the fireman carries over the shoulder, but I'm yeah. hold Maria like this, and I'm just at a jog's pace, but underneath where her legs are is just my revolver to just, if anybody comes within. Bang, bang. Yeah. Okay. Callum Adelaide Faraday, headed off in search of your friends. There is a huge amount of ruckus coming from the docks. As a massive crowd is gathering. Uh oh. Must this be our people. This doesn't look good. <laughs> no. There's about two dozen dark skinned individuals with long curved blades that are all kind of looking at one another and looking towards the crowd. One of them elbows in two, and they they both kind of head off in the direction you guys came from. I'll look at uh Callum and I'll go, I bet that's Vorox, Ben. You think so? Yeah. But I shook on the deal, so Vorak should hopefully back off and let me catch the Silver Witch. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But we need to find her. Yeah. That way we can at least act like we've already caught her in the act. Mm. I get it. We'll move on to the center where all that stuff went down. Okay. Yeah, big crowd. You'll see Buck... Carrying someone and two cavernous holes in the earth. <laughs> and a portion of that earth is still just kind of folding in on itself almost impossibly. It's a very non Euclidean way of earth moving. As I'm running, I'm going to take that um that earring that I got and I'm just gonna I'm gonna put it on and I'm gonna <laughs> Like rub it. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I'm running and I take it out and I'm just booking it. I mean, you're in the docks, but you're you're fast. You could get out of there pretty quick. Yeah, I'm getting where, out of the docks for where sure. Where would you go? Is there like um, what's on the outskirts of the city, like Fletcher's Roost? I mean, if you head, if you're heading out of town, uh-huh. uh huh. The nearest set of buildings would be Progenitor's Round. It's a big circle of temples. Okay. That's the nearest, like, non-city structure. But I'm saying, like, on to, the immediate outskirts of Fletcher's Roost, is there, like, forest or there's, something? There's farmland outside. Farmland? Okay, yeah. I'm just running for the farmland then. And I'm so T's darting out of town. The rest of you will see Buck. Prize in tow. I will see Maria in his, in his arms, and I'll go, do we need to get her to a physician ASAP? Anywhere but here. We gotta go. And yeah, he's like hobbling as his like entire like side is just Buck destroyed. is road rash right now. Yeah. Are, are we going to a doctor or the guild hall? Uh, uh, Temple of St. Roy. Alright. I'll help you carry her. So I'll put I'll put an arm out mm. to help you since you look battered, so Oh yeah. Uh yeah, Buck wouldn't let you take her fully, mm -hmm. but like just to aid some of the weight. Mm -hmm. And I'll guide them to the Temple of St. Roy. The whole crowd is like, where did she go? Pretty sure I saw her. Hey, we should we should do something about this. She made a big hole in the docks and they just left. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get her! Where did T go? There's a mob. Follow the There's mob! <laughs> <laughs> there does appear to be a genuine witch hunt mob for her. Yeah. She, she ran as soon as people started chattering and saw what she did. Did you see what direction she ran? Uh, I'll try to re rec recollect the steps, but... You were not really paying attention. No, absolutely not. <laughs> like, as much as I love T... No, like, no, I was no. Like, and I knew it, like, that's uh, why I left, because I was like, I'm just going to bring harm to you guys right now, so I'm out. Okay. I'll, I'll try to find her. And Callum will walk out and uh, pretend to be a reporter to get eyewitness statements <laughs> on where the silver-haired witch went. Okay. Up with the daily snoop. What'd you get? <laughs> <laughs> what do you got for me? The daily red tail. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Arriving at the 
Temple of St. Roy in in short order. Uh, T attaching a an earring and running to the farmlands. Mm-hmm. It's eerily similar to how we met you. T <laughs> as you dart into an abandoned uh-huh. farm building, hiding beneath the floorboards for a while, waiting for this all to blow over. You hear the clomp of heeled shoes. Bestie! <laughs> Finally, some mayhem. Why are you under the floors? <laughs> Don't answer that. I already know. Where was this when we were partying? <laughs> we were gluing windows shut. You could have told me you could flip a carriage. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yes, I I caused a lot of mayhem. Um, you sure did. I, uh, however, I it, I put someone in harm's way that I was trying to help. Um, Haven't we all? I mean, yes. sure, I've never flipped a carriage with a pregnant lady inside, but <laughs> the day is young. God damn it. <laughs> never living that one though. No. Um. But I'm. I also have a. a I may have perhaps have to cause more mayhem. Maybe with your help, I need to get away from a mob. You need to get away from the mob. There's a mob. Oh my goodness! Do they and have torches like and pitchforks? <laughs> <laughs> Are they angry? <laughs> Are they rioting? You could just Likely. not look like you. Dye your hair. Mm. Do a little bit with this. Get you a different coat. Hide that scarf, maybe. I mean, it's iconic, but... The scarf has to stay. The other Mm. things can go. Mm. Well, we're going to have to do something about all of this. Mm. I know someone. Perfect. We'll get you to a stylist. Let's go. (laughs) And they will usher you out from under the floors and produce a very elegant, like spangly red cloak and just fling it around you. Just okay. be like, just keep your head down and don't let any of this show through. <laughs> Arriving at the Temple of St. Roy. Same withered elderly man missing several fingers and badly burned. My child. Uh, oh dear. Physician, uh, somebody, anybody. I'll, I'll, I'll pay whatever. I just couldn't... Yes, come, come this way, please. Um, would, you, would you mind clearing off some of the benches, please? We will need somewhere for her to lay. No. Bring the lot of you inside. For the two of you in the, in the heat of the moment, it's a very, very small chapel with a wooden statue of a saint you've probably not heard of. There's a very bright red and orange warm glow encompassing the entire room. He'll lay Maria out on one of the pews. I am no doctor, but I do believe she is all right. She's... She looks better than you, my child. We should clean that wound of yours. You've got a lot of Uh, dirt and grime. Don't worry about me. Uh, Her, uh, doctor, anybody. And Buck's, like, head is, like, yeah. spinning and, like, reeling. Help me yeah. sit him down. Yeah, please. Adelaide will help Buck, because she doesn't know anything about human pregnancies, but mm-hmm. can clean a wound. Yeah. <laughs> You're a veterinarian. Stitch him up! <laughs> <laughs> That's in every movie. I can at least clean it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, make a medicine test. Put your skills to the test. Do it. Do it. Do it. Roll the dice. Do it. Do it. Oh, my God, Buddy. dude. But nine, no. nine. Okay, I just rolled a one on my mastery die for the fifth time. In yeah, a row. for real. Maria will give you two. Yay! Because <laughs> that's just that's just how nice she is. That is crazy. So she will, in Maria's own way, she's helping you help Buck because Buck <laughs> refuses to help himself and let him be helped. She's a keeper, <laughs> man. Yeah. <laughs> so as you as you start kind of cleaning some of Buck's wounds, it's around this time you'll realize Buck is concussed. <laughs> Mm. does have a sprained <laughs> a wrist and is extremely cut up 
under that duster coat. He is a rash of road. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming you take off Buck's like jacket and like yeah, yeah, to yeah, see yeah. like yeah. everything. Gotta. Uh, you see like a ton of stab, probably some scars. Bullet. Yeah, stab gotcha. scars and like uh, probably a couple of gunshots that he has taken in his time. Uh, Adelaide, being as naive as she is about this line of work, she's mm-hmm. surprised there's not more. Oh, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> well, you could use a few more scars, but <laughs> <laughs> that'll give you some straight cred. We're cleaning you up. The uh, the priest looks over to you, Buck, and goes, "When I." told you that perhaps you hadn't suffered enough. I didn't mean for you to take it quite so literally, but... I'm a literal, literal guy. I take it this, uh, this, this one is who you were seeking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and his, like, hand's, like, shaking and pulls out the pocket watch, and his eyes start to roll to the back of his head, and he just kind of lays and falls. Yeah. There is a, uh, hospital. I would recommend you take both of them, too, Im- immediately. Um... There is very little here I can do. I agreed. That's where I wanted to take him, but he wanted to come here. Yes. Well, he's, uh, you know. All right, let's get him there, Faraday. Yeah. I'll I'll look at the priest, and I'll say, do you have any, um, anything that we can, my, uh, Elicult here can drag behind him so that we can easily get both of them over to the hospital? I, what little, little I have is at your disposal. Um, I believe there is still a wagon in the back. Okay. Transporting. We'll, we'll bring it back. Oh, it is hardly a trouble. St. Roy would want you to have it. Uh, I gently will slap your face. You got a concussed. You can't sleep. Wake up. Uh, yeah, Buck is going to do his best to try to stay awake, but he yeah. is like drugs and cart chases will do that to you. Yeah. Well, as you all drag Buck and Maria... To a hospital in the military district. Check them both in. T is Bedlam takes you to the Fab Five or the Fab yes. One is giving me a makeover. Uh, definitely, uh, Jonathan's here for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's gonna fix all of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this is you. what we're working with. Let's <laughs> fix it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll come up with your new look between now and then for you to lay low in the city. Callum's lost in the mob. Yeah, Callum's like, where did everyone go? <laughs> 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 uh, but as I'll say, as Bedlam restyles you and as you all check Buck and Maria into a hospital for potentially long-term care, two of Vorok's men will arrive at the Ember Lounge with news that the Silver Witch has been spotted and quite active not far away he goes he'll say to himself little fish swimming in big pond now the chase is on he'll crack his knuckles rise up shake off a little bit of the slipstream and prepare to start hunting tea with his full his full military capacities Nighthawk will board a small ferry style ship with Duke Adolphus as they head to the northwest little island shortly off the coast headed back towards Rhymewreath Keep as Nighthawk reveals to him that the Silver Witch has been working with a group known as the Signature Six who has interfered with the Talcari's business for the last time leaving out a few key details and stating that the long-term medical care will no longer be required, and that, in fact, the Tal Curry shall be moving into Rhyme Wreath Keep within the, within the month. And so, as the Tal Curry seek to move out of Fletcher's Roost, Buck and Maria settle in for a bit of recuperation, Vorok and the Broken Son of the Eastern Mountains begin to compile their forces together, Fiora de Vries is moving against Merritt McDonough. That's where we're going to leave this session. Wow. As a whole lot of things are moving. Wow. All at once. Welcome to Gale of Thrones. (laughs) 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 But thank you all for watching. 
and we will see you in some capacity quite soon. Stay tuned, I guess. Ta-ta for now.